Welcome back to my third episode in my witchcraft training course available through Patreon. Previously, I have discussed starting your Book of Shadows as well as some of the basic beliefs in witchcraft. So I've spent quite some time thinking of what to do next and I decided to jump straight in with air. This is the first of five elements that we will be discussing this year. Since in my own practice I always begin with this element, I thought it was only appropriate to continue with that and begin with air this month. Alright, so what is air? In witchcraft, we honor nature, and part of that is honoring the elements, capital E. It is summarized into five, air, fire, water, earth, and spirit. Each one rules over different parts of self, tools, areas of magical studies, and so much more. Air is in the east. While this may seem confusing to attach it to a direction, it is more so used out of simplicity's sake. You can technically call this element from any direction or change which one you associate it with. Personally, I prefer to have air in the east. This is the place of new beginnings, the mind is fresh from the night's rest, and it is the literal dawn of a new day that begins in this direction. Air is connected magically to the mind. What this means is that your analytical, logical, and overall thinking brain is connected to this element. When performing magic, this is the rational mind getting added into the mix. This could be the research into a spell or the writing of the ritual. Whenever you are using your mind or your thoughts, this is air at work. On a physical level, air is connected to our breath. Each second, give or take, we are experiencing this element. Without it, we would die and quickly. This exchange occurs inside and fuels our bodies and allows us to live. Air is also connected to our skin and the breeze. Think of how the wild winds affect you throughout the year. This is how we get to physically experience air is through our skin. While air is connected to our lungs with our breath, we don't really get to experience that other than feeling our lungs expand. Otherwise, it's a very unconscious experience. Our skin, on the other hand, we can feel air. Think of how the wild winds affect you throughout the year. For most places in the world, the temperature and forces of these winds change throughout the coming months. At some points, it's warm and gentle. Others, it is bitter and harsh. In some traditions, the direction of the wind has a purpose as well. For now, I'm leaving this connection just in the east. In other places, like in the Norse tradition, there are deities associated with this element. I feel that it is more of an advanced or maybe intermediate. For now, we're just beginners. We're going to learn to simply connect with the element of air. In magic, air is associated with sound, smoke, and the wand. In some traditions, air is connected to the athame instead of the wand, and you will find that in tarot. Personally, I don't agree with this. To me, the branch that has been blown in the breeze is more connected to air far more than the blade that was forged in fire. The connection to sound for air comes from the fact that we cannot see noise. The vibration flows through the air and changes the frequency. Many witches will have a bell or a singing bowl. These tools can be used to sound cleanse. On the note of cleansings, smoke is also one of the main uses for air in magic. The smoke can be used to cleanse a space. You've likely seen someone walk around a home burning a bundle of dried herbs. Typically, this is going to be sage, though it can be made out of cedar or rosemary. White sage was once the most popular. However, over time, we've moved away from this particular herb and replaced it with garden sage as it is not endangered. With smoke, many witches will give incense as an offering to their guides. Whether this is a stick of incense or a cone or loose dried herbs on a charcoal disc.